Insecure configuration of a web application can lead to information disclosure that allows an attacker to get access to sensitive information and use this information to perform malicious activities such as authentication bypass. During this video, we look at this scenario in action. For the purpose of this exercise, we use a lab from Web Security Academy called Authentication Bypass via Information Disclosure and you can find the link to this lab in the video description. In this lab, the admin interface has an authentication vulnerability. To exploit this vulnerability and solve the lab, first we need to find the custom HTTP header that is used by the front end, then use this custom HTTP header to bypass the authentication to get access to admin interface and delete user callers. All right, let's go ahead and get started by clicking on access the lab. To login into our account, first we go to the login page, then fill out the username and password fields with the account credentials that we got from lab description, and finally click on login. We are now in the My Account page. Let's try to directly access the admin interface. So in the address bar, we change the URL path to slash admin and submit the request. The application returns a message that suggests the admin interface is only available to local users. So we need to modify the request for accessing the admin interface in a way that the web server assumes the request is coming from a local user. We need to check what information is sent to the web server when a user tries to access the admin interface and how the server handles the user request to determine if the request is coming from a local user. So we go to Burp HTTP history, select the HTTP GET request to slash admin interface and send this request to Burp repeater. Let's just send the request without making any changes. The application returns 401 unauthorized response code, confirming we don't have the necessary permissions to access the admin panel. Also in the response body, we see the message that the admin interface only available to local users. If we look at the HTTP request, we don't see any useful information that could possibly be used by the web server to determine if the request for accessing the admin panel is coming from a local user. However, there is a chance that extra information might have been added to this request before it receives by the server. To check what information is sent to the server, we can use an HTTP method called trace. The trace method is used for debugging and testing purposes as it allows us to see how a server is handling a request. When a client sends a trace request to a server, the server will respond with the message that includes the same request information that was sent by the client in the request headers. This allows the client to see how the request was modified along the way before it received by the server. All right, let's see if trace HTTP method is enabled and check if it can help us to find the relevant information that the server is using to determine if the request for accessing the admin panel is coming from a local user. So we change the HTTP method to trace and send the request. In the application response, we see the HTTP request that is received by the server. Here we notice a custom request header that was added to our request the X custom IP authorization header containing our IP address. So this custom HTTP request should be used by the server to determine if the request for accessing the admin panel is coming from a local user. Now let's add this custom HTTP header to the request and set its value to localhost IP address. To see how the server handles this request, we use a trace method. If we look at the receive request by the server, we see the custom HTTP header value is the localhost IP address. This confirms that by adding the custom header to our request, we can trick the web server to assume that the request is coming from a local user. Now to access the admin panel, we go to the request tab and change the HTTP method to get and send the request. We get 200 HTTP response code. If we render the response, we see that we have managed to get access to the admin panel. Now let's see how we can access the admin panel in the web browser. First, let's go to the web browser and refresh the page. So currently, we don't have access to the admin panel. To access the admin panel in the web browser, we need to configure Burp proxy to add the custom HTTP header containing the localhost IP address to every request that we send. Next, we go to Burp and click on Proxy Settings. 
Then we go to match and replace section. To add the custom authorization header to every request that goes through per proxy, we click on add. For type, we select request header. Because we want to add a new header, we leave the match field blank and in the replace field, we paste the custom authorization header containing the IP address of the localhost. Finally, we click on OK and close the settings window. Now that we have configured the proxy settings, let's see if we can access the admin panel in the web browser. In web browser, refresh the page. In burp, we see the HTTP GET request for accessing the admin panel. As we see, the custom header is automatically been added to this request. We can now turn off burp intercept and in web browser, we can see that we have now access to the admin panel. To solve the lab, we need to delete user callers, so we can go ahead and click on delete. As we see, we get the message that we solved the lab. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like, share with your friends and also subscribe to this channel as I upload new videos every week.